Hello everyone and welcome back to the DR House. My name is Alicia and this is my uh, video series here on YouTube about all the crafty things that I like to do. So if you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. This is episode 77, I believe. And uh, today is Saturday, April 3rd, 4th. Saturday, April 4th of 2020. So yay. Um, I apologize um, for my appearance. I have just come back from a run and then followed that run up with a walk. Uh, and I just didn't feel like putting on makeup after that. So whatever, I'm super casual today. Uh, let's be honest, I'm super casual most days, so this really isn't out of the ordinary, but, um, anyway, that's the deal, you guys. It has been beautiful weather, even though, uh, it has been rainy for the past couple of days. Not today, but it has been, uh, kind of drizzly. By the way, I'm coming to you from Tacoma, Washington, uh, within the United States. So I'm in the Pacific Northwest of the U.S., where it is known for being very rainy and cloudy, or at least drizzly, uh, and today it's not. So I went outside for my run and it was amazing. Um, I like to run. It, um, I'm not a very fast runner, um, but uh, it's kind of like, med it's a meditative activity that gets me out of the house and I get to see really interesting things when I'm out on my runs sometimes that I wouldn't see if I were just uh, staying at home. And so I really like, and when I'm out on my runs, I look for things like um, animals that I don't usually see, like maybe a, a strange bird that I've never seen before, or even just like um, today when we were out on our walk, uh, so I went for a two-mile run, and then after the run, uh, Mike joined me with Marjorie, our Labrador, and we went for a mile-and-a-half walk, and <laughs> we walked by this yard with two two uh, smaller dogs in, it's a fenced-in yard in front of the house, and I think one of them was a bulldog, and the other one was <sighs> more like a... I think like an English bulldog. So I think there was like an American bulldog and then it, anyway, they were bulldog style type of dogs. And one was clearly younger than the other one. So the younger one was uh, trying to prop himself up on the the older dog to be able to try to see over the, <laughs> the fence. It's a chain link fence. It, I, we could see through it, they could see through it. But uh, it was just, it was cute to see. Anyway. I look for things like that when I'm out on my runs. Um, interesting architecture. Um, I've seen st what I would consider strange statues in people's yards and things like that. So that's what I look for when I'm out on my run. So I enjoy it. I'm glad that the weather is, is starting to get warmer out where it's more comfortable for me to be able to do that. So, um, I have asthma and <laughs> so, uh, running in colder weather uh, is really difficult. Uh, and I think it's difficult in general, but I definitely have to puff on my inhaler a lot if I'm going to try to do that when it's cold outside, so I generally just don't even bother. And I only run outside when it's warm and delightful, like today was. so. So that's what I did earlier today, but this is not a running podcast. This is more about knitting and crocheting and the fiber arts, as you could probably tell by my stash over here. <laughs> so, so like I said, welcome to the episode, whether you're new or returning. It's so great that you're here. And um, let me just remind you guys that uh, the D Hard House sock knit along is still going on it will be running through the end of april so through april 30th there's 30 days in april correct i'm looking on my calendar because 
no, not calculator, calendar. I do that a lot. Um, yes, 30 days in April. There's some kind of rhyme or poem or something. Uh, Michael knows it. I don't know it. <laughs> to help you remember which months have 30 days and which ones have 31. I just look at a calendar. Anyway, so the sock knit along is still going on and you have plenty of time to join in if you want. And don't forget, you don't actually have to finish your socks to be eligible for prizes. So keep that in mind. Uh, what I did do is I did finish the second sock, which means I have finished all of the tutorial videos to go along with the pattern. So in order to see the tutorial videos, you have to purchase the pattern and the links are provided there. So they're videos that are included with the pattern. So the pattern is to is for, for these socks right here. Uh, it's called Waxing and Waning and it's available for purchase on Ravelry.com. Uh, I will provide a link to that down below down below in the description box. <laughs> okay, talking is difficult. Uh, <laughs> yes, so there will be a link to the pattern down below in the description box for your convenience. Uh, the pattern only costs one US dollar. I wanted to keep it very affordable uh, during, in general. I mean, if you look at my patterns, they're they're pretty affor affordable, and I, I like being able to do that. Um, my full-time job is teaching, uh, and so I do this for fun, really. Uh, so I have a number of free patterns as well as some um, what I would just call affordable patterns uh, available. So check those out. Uh, but yes, the Knit Along is to knit p this pattern in particular. Uh, and I've created the tutorial videos to go along with it for those of you who uh, might be beginners. Uh, whether you're a beginner sock knitter or a beginner color work knitter or, or you just like having tutorial videos, uh, I've included those. So like I said, I teach for a living and uh, accessibility and um, equity is really important to me and so I'm trying to uh, incorporate that when I can into uh, into my knitting patterns as well. Um, so this is one opportunity where I was able to find the time to do that. So this episode is coming out to you later than anticipated, partially because I did record those five tutorial videos <laughs> in the meantime. Uh, but yes, they're available through the pattern, uh, meant to be sort of pattern support uh, to go along with it. So this is my first finished object that I want to share with you is this finished pair of socks. So I had the first one all ready to go so that you guys would know what the pattern looked like for the knit along. Uh, and then I knit the second sock in order to create the tutorial video. So I am finished. Yay. Uh, and like I said, you don't have to finish your socks in order to be eligible for prizes. Um, what all you have to really do is participate. So post in the Ravelry group and uh, post on Instagram using the hashtag. Uh, and all that information will be down below in the description box as well. So I'll have a link to the Ravelry group where um, I have a thread for the knit along where you can be posting. Uh, and then if you're going to be doing this on Instagram, please use the hashtag DH Sock Cal 2020. Excuse me. So I'll be giving away two prizes, one to a Ravelry winner and one to an Instagram winner. And you're encouraged to participate both ways if you would like to. So you have twice as many chances to to win a prize. Okay. So that's that's that. The knit along is still going on and I finished my pair of socks, which is exciting. Uh, and, then, and then I cast on a second one. So I'm going to kind of do this out of order between finished objects and and works in progress. Um, 
just for the sake of flow. So yeah, this pair is finished. I knit these for me. I knit these on US size one Chow Goo knitting needles. And the yarn I used is, um, so this gray color is, this is, I looked it up because it was scrap yarn from a previous project. This, it's not Cloudborn, it's Cascade. Cascade Heritage in just a gray color. And then the main color here is Knit Picks Stroll in the Make Believe hand-painted colorway. Uh, and so yes, that's what I uh, did for these socks. I made these for me. And then, um, because these just wax, but I had the intention in the pattern of, of waxing and waning, so I cast on a second pair, and I did finish the first sock. So here, let me get a blocker here, and then we can compare. So I did finish the first sock because, you know, I just have so much free time, not. <laughs> uh, but so this one uh, waxes and wanes. So using the pattern, I've written it so you can adapt the color work charts uh, so you can work the transition backwards on the foot if you want to. So um, don't tell, but these will be for um, one of my family members for uh, probably Christmas so I won't say who they're for in case they're watching the podcast um, but yeah these will be a Christmas present and I just love how they've turned out so I used um, US size 1 knitting needle again uh, but this time it's not chow gu I'm doing um, two I have the second one on the needles uh, I'm using two 16 inch circular needles and these are from Knit Picks. These needles, they have the uh, plum colored cord and I really like these. They have a great join. Uh, they're very comfortable, easy to work with. Uh, and the yarn, uh, the colors are navy and white and it's uh, Premier Yarn Serenity Sock. Uh, for both of these, uh, one in navy and one in white. And so they're solid color commercial sock yarns. And it just looks, I, th I think it looks really snazzy. So uh, so the tutorial videos are worked using, using um, this sock here. But then I also mentioned that you can modify the pattern if you want to. Uh, since it is called waxing and waning, this sock waxes and wanes while this one just waxes. So anyway, the idea is to go with uh, the moon changing phases and s transitioning from, you know, full moon to no moon to full moon, etc. I think you get it. <laughs> but yeah, so I finished one pair of socks. Uh, I've got one sock finished here and the second one is halfway done. I just made it past the heel turn. Um, I have a progress keeper on here to show me where uh, the middle is for the pattern so I know to flip the pattern. So uh, I measured the legs so it would be the length of the foot. So these uh, measurements here match and then that way when I fold the sock in half the patterns actually line up which is um, yeah so if I fold it in half at the heel you can see how the patterning lines up and I just I just think that's kind of neat um, so I, I did that intentionally when I was knitting this so yep these will be a gift and I'm very excited about it I'm also very happy to be participating in the 12 gift knit, um, 12 gift socks knit along, uh, where we're, we're trying to knit uh, one pair of socks each month uh, leading up to the holidays uh, to spread out the gift knitting throughout the year. Uh, and each month there's a featured designer 
uh, and you're encouraged to knit that designer's patterns. I'm participating not only to knit socks, but also as a designer. Uh, and so I have the month of August. Um, so that'll be coming up. But I'm excited uh, to, to work on these for April. But also, uh, I did buy a pattern from the featured designer for this month. And I'm really excited to cast that on. So after I finish my wax, my second waxing and waning, uh, I will I will cast on that other sock by that other designer, which should be really nice. So I will share that information when I when I have that cast on. I have something to show you. Uh, yeah, so one pair finished, one pair half finished, uh, and guess what? I have another pair finished. <laughs> I tell you what. Uh, I finished uh, these self-striping pair of socks for my dad, um, and these will probably be a Christmas present. Don't tell him. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm going to give them to him for Father's Day or Christmas, uh, especially with everything going on right now. He's very cooped up inside. And I would love to send a package uh, with socks and uh, goodies uh, to brighten his day, but I also don't want to add the stress of, of feeling like needing to disinfect everything I'm sending, so I will ask before I do that. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is very difficult to, even though... I live in the state of Washington and my parents live in Texas. Um, even though we are far apart uh, and not having any contact, if I want to send stuff in the mail, I mean, I'm touching this. And while I was knitting it, I was touching, I touched every part of this sock, these socks. Um, so I'm trying to think about things like that before I send them. Right. Anyway, they're for him, and they will get washed um, bef before I give them to him, no matter when that is. Uh, <laughs> they haven't been washed yet, but they're finished. So this is out of some self-striping yarn. This is Patton's Croy in the gray-brown marl colorway, and I intentionally reversed the order of the stripes so they do look like a coordinating pair of socks they do not exactly match the stripes go in the opposite order and i totally meant to do that uh, and i think it turned out really well um yeah so i'm very happy with them i was worried about how the stripes would behave um, around the heel like on the heel flap and uh through the gusset and stuff but yeah so I did a heel flap and gusset and I knit these on US size 1 knitting needles uh, 64 stitches I did a heel flap and gusset I worked it uh, cuff down standard toe and yeah I think he's gonna love them uh, mom and dad specifically asked me for more socks they love the ones that I've made them and they want more and so uh, last Christmas, I gave them each one pair of socks. Uh, I'd love to be able to give them each two pairs of socks this year. So we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so <sighs> lots of sock knitting has been happening around here. <laughs> it's been interesting. Uh, but yeah, lots of sock knitting. I'm very happy about that. Um, and then, if that wasn't enough, I did cast on another sock, uh, because while I did go for a run outside today, I've been having to run inside on the treadmill, because it's been kind of drizzly, and it's just been cool enough outside that it's hard on my lungs. So, if, if I do end up running on the treadmill, then I do, like, a walking warm-up beforehand, and while I do the walking warm-up, I like to knit on socks. So what this does is it gives me the motivation to get on the treadmill in the first place. Uh, and once I get 
on the treadmill and I do my walking warm up, I start to feel really good and then I want to do the running portion. But uh, without knitting the sock, I just feel like well, I could be doing anything else and it would seem more productive than getting on the treadmill. So anyway, so I cast on um, another just plain stockinette stitch sock so that I would have something mindless to work on on the treadmill. So this will be a pair of socks from Michael, my husband, and I'm using more Patton's Croy yarn. So I have uh, gray for the cuff. This is a two by two rib cuff. And then I'm using this new color. Uh, here's the ball of it. It's a very um, turquoise color, but this is, let's see, I have the tag, Cascade Colors. So yeah, that'll be fun. So I only have one ball of this yarn because I used a coupon for Joann's where you get so much off one regular priced item. And this yarn is almost never on sale. <laughs> so uh, I end up going in and just kind of buying one ball at a time. Uh, but yeah, I did that for to get the second ball for dad's socks and now here for Michael's sock. But uh, but I'm going to split this up. So I'm going to use the gray on the, the cuff, the heel, and the toe. And then that way I'll be able to spread this out um, a bit further. So the plan is to use half of this for one sock and the other half for the other sock. So I'm weighing it as I go. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have so far. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to save this for when I'm on the treadmill so that it motivates me to get on the treadmill. Sometimes, sometimes I just need that little bit of extra push to do something that I already know is good for me. It's just so much easier to continue sitting on the couch, not exercising. <laughs> and then I have a huge finished object. Yeah, I finished it. You know what I'm talking about? I finished it. I finished a blanket, a huge blanket. I finished it. I powered through, this was pretty much my spring break, <laughs> was since we couldn't go on vacation because we're not allowed to because of the stay home order. Um, so we weren't allowed to go camping, all the campgrounds are closed, hiking trails are closed. Um, just, you know, we, the way we would normally have spent spring break was not allowed to happen. We were told we needed to stay home. We're not allowed to go to campus, um, and be in the buildings without special permission. Uh, and so I was like, all right, I'm just gonna power through this blanket then if I'm not allowed to really go anywhere. So I finished it and I have a finished blanket now. So um, let me put in a picture here of um, the blanket in its entirety. It is large enough to cover a queen size bed. So there is the blanket on a queen size bed. Um, it just, you know, it just reaches side to side. Like it reaches side to side, it doesn't really hang over the edges um, at all on the sides. But the idea is that this blanket is for uh, basically one person to sleep with, but um, the two of us could fit underneath it. Anyway, yeah, so it's finished, it's done, it's huge, it's awesome. I have it here. <laughs> All the ends are woven in because I made sure to do that as I was finishing the squares. So here is the right side. And here's what the wrong side looks like. So you can kind of see there is a little bit of a difference. Uh, even though it's garter stitch, which is pretty reversible, you can see there's nice clean edges here on the right side, while on the wrong side they're not as clean. 
but it's fine. From far away, you really can't tell. But yeah, it's done. Um, <laughs> it's massive, just massive. huge. <sighs> All right. So <laughs> it's great. I love it. It's awesome. So yeah, I have finished this and actually let me pull up my um, Ravelry page, which will be, I'm using my laptop to record. So <laughs> This might look kind of awkward, but, um, okay, so I need to go to my project. Okay, so I put in the estimate of the yardage. So while I was on the last couple of rows of this blanket, I was weighing, uh, I would weigh the skein, then knit the square, then weigh the skein afterward. And I took a tally of that for about 32 squares worth. And I feel like it was a little bit different between the charcoal and the white color, this white. They're a little bit different on their thicknesses, even though they're both red heart, super solid, whatever. Excuse me. Um, but I got a pretty good average um, that each square used about five and a half grams of w this worsted weight yarn. And that was the same for the this light gray the the white and the charcoal was the average was about five and a half grams per square so i <laughs> did the math and for the whole blanket if i convert that to yards is roughly 3500 yards in this blanket and i started this project back in June of 2018 and I have now finished it. I finished it on April 1st of 2020. So almost two whole years. I'm just going to go ahead and say two years. Two years to knit this blanket. Um, considering I wasn't knitting on it actively like every day or even every month. Um, there were definite times when this was just in a corner somewhere being ignored. Uh, so that's not too bad. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. So it's a very nice blanket, and I'm very happy to be finished with it. And of course, that gets me thinking about starting a new one, <laughs> which I haven't done yet, but I'm thinking about it. And definitely my next one will be a crochet blanket. So I have, um, I have another mitered square blanket in progress uh, where I'm using all different colors. So I have um, this rack right here is all of my acrylic worsted weight yarn. And so for the multicolor blanket, I'm going through and picking out the colors to go in each row and spreading it out and trying not to put two of the same color in each row and whatnot. Um, and I think I got kind of bogged down by that whole try not to repeat colors thing and having to plan out the colors so it would be somewhat balanced in my eyes beforehand and I think that whole process made me feel like it was a lot of work and I wanted something that was like just three colors following a pattern I don't have to think about it so I really liked that about this blanket but I am excited to get back to I think I want to finish that mitered square blanket before I start my next one uh, because let's see that miter square blanket the multicolored one that is the only blanket I have in progress now yep yep so I would like to finish my in progress blankets <laughs> before I start another one 
I think that would be nice. Because I did start, start that multicolored one before this one. Yeah. So I would like to do that. Anyway. Very exciting. I finished it. Yay. Okay. <sighs> so that's it for knitting. Um, but I've been doing some spinning. So I got out my Turkish drop spindle the other day and I put um, more uh, yarn on here, spun more yarn with my Turkish drop spindle. So uh, this is a uh, spindle that I picked up at DFW Fiberfest, which is Dallas Fort Worth Fiberfest. I used to live in Texas. And uh, this is from Jerry Brock Woodworks. And I picked the one with moon phases on it. Uh, but she also had many other beautiful designs to choose from. And uh, she's got large and small spindles. I chose a larger one. And I am spinning on this some merino wool, which I bought at the same DFW Fiber Festival. Uh, and this is from <sighs> Merino and More. Is that what they're called? Now I'm second guessing myself. Mohair and More, that's it. They're called Mohair and More and they're also out of Texas. Uh, I don't know where Jerry Brock is from. I don't think she's from Texas, but she was at the Fiber Festival in Texas. Um, but Mohair and More, uh, their farm is in Texas. Anyway, it's this, oh, it's so nice, this merino. Um, so it's just pure merino wool. And what I'm doing is uh, spinning it on the spindle. And I'm also plying it on the spindle. So the yarn that's on here is actual yarn. Like it's plied and everything. So it's a three-ply yarn. I'm using a uh, Navajo plying or chain ply technique uh, and I'm plying as I go. So right here is a section of a singles uh, but down here is all plied yarn and so uh, part of the reason I bought this Turkish drop spindles because Jerry Brock was also doing tutorials about how to ply on the fly and Yep, that was it. I had to have it. I had to do it. And uh, anyway, so this time I am trying to wrap a nice little God's eye on there. Uh, but normally I don't pay attention to it and I just wrap it on there. Uh, but yeah, so I, I had purchased four ounces of this Merino. And I've already previously spun up two ounces of it, so half of it is already done. Uh, what I have in this bag is, is it the rest of it? Or is this just, no, I see the rest of it over here. So this is the third ounce, what's left of the third ounce, and the fourth ounce is over there. There we go. I thought I split it up. Anyway, so the idea is to only spin up one ounce on here at a time. This is the softest stuff, you guys. Oh my gosh. Is that my eye? All right. Anyway. So it was nice. I, I picked up my Turkish drop spindle again, partially because I was getting a little frustrated with my spinning wheel and its clunkiness behavior. Um, so I did take off the leather connector piece between the foot pedal and the what's it called Conrad or something um, so there's a foot pedal and then there's a straight piece of wood that connects to the hub and which makes the spinning wheel go around anyway there's a little leather piece down there I thought the leather piece was the reason for the clunkiness so I I rubbed oil on it and I soaked it in oil and it loosened it up quite a bit and then put it back on and the wheel is still just clunk 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 so that's not it so um Michael and I 
started kind of taking it apart a little bit to try to figure out what was going on. And I think the problem is with the crank. So I have an Ashford traditional wheel and I bought it used from uh, someone at a flea market who knew nothing about spinning wheels. Uh, <laughs> just had picked it up at an estate sale and was selling it for profit. And it was really cheap. They didn't know if it had all the parts it needed or whatnot. Uh, and it was a really good deal for someone who didn't know if they liked spinning on a wheel. Uh, which I do, by the way. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I think there's something wrong with the crank. Um, the, the pin that's supposed to hold it in there nice and snug seems to slide around a little bit. And so it, anyway, so we diagnosed the problem and tore it apart and put it back together. In the meantime, I did order a new crank, so we'll probably end up replacing it. But we put it back together and I tapped the pin back in with a hammer. It's got a very nice snug fit, that pin. And it did not clunk today. I spun two bobbins of singles and here are those two singles plied together and there was no clunking. I don't know, maybe I just found the sweet spot, but whatever, I have a replacement part on the way. So if it starts misbehaving again, I can replace it because gosh darn it, it's annoying. It is really annoying to, to hear it and to feel it because I can feel it in the foot pedal. I can feel it slipping and like that's the reason it's making the clunking noise and it's just annoying. So it was a dream to spin on that thing without it. So anyway, yep, so I have another bobbin um, spun up. This is Coopworth. Come on. It doesn't want to focus on the yarn for some reason, I guess because of my lighting situation. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, so this is Coopworth that I'm spinning up on my spinning wheel. Um, I have six other skeins that I've spun up right there in that cubby right there. These six um, are Coopworth. Uh, so I'm spinning these up with the hopes of making um, a sweater out of them. So I want to spin all of it up before I start knitting uh, and try to be consistent about it. So I am doing the, I did wash the fleece. I'm uh, doing the fiber preparation, spinning it, uh, and then I have plans to knit with it as well. So I am doing a worsted prep with combs, hand combs and I'm doing a worsted spin. I'm doing a short forward draw. And uh, yeah, it is very shiny. This is, I think, one of my best plies. I've been struggling with plying the yarn. I think this one looks the best out of all of them. So I'm very happy about that. Um, and yeah, oh yeah, it's a two ply. I'm just delighted. Okay, so that's all I have for knitting. Um, I've been, this has become my office to work from home, uh, which has been interesting. So I've been meeting with my colleagues doing, um, video chats for our meetings and whatnot and I've got all my yarn right there behind me so I kind of wonder what they're thinking when they see that. No one has asked me about it yet. They know, a lot of them know that I like to knit. Um, that was one thing I mentioned in, in my job interview actually when I was interviewing for the position. I was wearing a, a hand knit shawl for my interview which is funny but um Anyway, I just wonder if they can tell that that's yarn and <laughs> or if they're just not even paying attention at all. Uh, but I'm curious about that. 
So yeah, this is kind of in my office. So I, I not only have crafty things in here, I now also have math textbooks and notes about um, calendar and schedule and videos I need to make and things like that. So uh, it's, it's okay. It's just now my two worlds that I kept separate are now merging together. So it's interesting. Uh, it's no longer come in this room to do crafting. It's now come in this room probably to work. <laughs> so it has a different vibe to it now. And maybe some of you are feeling the same way about that with some of your rooms in your home. Uh, that it once served this purpose and now it serves another as well. Uh, which just changes the feel of the space, in my opinion. So that's been interesting to be aware of. Um, also being aware of the fact that I am now around my husband 24-7. <laughs> starting to get it on each other's last nerve and so it's uh, uh yeah it's been interesting but uh, we're getting through it and we're fine we're healthy and we're trying to stay home as much as possible we're only going to the store when we need to because we're we uh we had two gallons of milk in the fridge and went through it and had um, a bunch of eggs and went through them and you know that's and so like going to the store because we are now out of so many essentials that we we actually need to go to the store and so um, we're trying not to go frivolously only when we need to and so yeah thank goodness we're going for walks in our neighborhood because it gets us out of the house, gets us some fresh air. We can see the flowers that are blooming and uh, wave at the neighbors. And it's, uh, I think it's help helping to keep us sane, <laughs> which is good. So anyway, that is all I have to say about that. So. Uh, I hope you are participating in the knit along. Uh, please don't forget to post in the Ravelry group thread, post your progress pictures, comment on each other's progress pictures. It's a, uh, it's a chatter thread as well as a place to post your finished object photo if you happen to finish your pair of socks. Um, it's also a place to post questions and whatnot, so be active in that thread because I'm going to randomly draw a winner from that thread. So the more you post, the more chances you have to win. Uh, and also if you post progress photos, finished object photos, that kind of thing on Instagram, make sure to use the hashtag DHSockCal2020 uh, because any post that has that hashtag uh, will count as an entry in the drawing for a prize. So feel free to participate both ways. This is like double entries, you guys, in for the prizes. So so I look forward to seeing uh, more posts and more photos. Uh, quite a few people have been active in the Ravelry thread, so I really appreciate that. And um, yeah, be safe, be well. And uh, in the meantime, happy crafting, and I hope to see you next week. Bye.